Except in the rarest of cases, doubt is always a component of faith. It can be a one-time experience or a chronic condition. Of course, it can also become a cancer that feeds on faith and destroys it. But to some degree, doubt is present in every act of faith. Why talk of doubt? Well, on the Sunday after Easter, the gospel selection is always about the doubting Thomas. You know the story. The apostle Thomas was absent when Jesus first appeared in the upper room. Although told by others that the Lord was alive, he proclaimed that he would never believe unless he could put his hands in his side and feel the nail marks in his hands. At the next appearance, Thomas is present, but he never follows through on the conditions that he had set down. He believes, without probing the nail prints, he professes that Christ is his Lord and God. Scholars tell us that this doubter came to the most sophisticated and highest level of faith by calling Jesus Lord and God, rather than rabbi or teacher, as others had done. In our own St. Jude's Chapel, Thomas's words are inscribed above the altar in Latin, but it translates, my Lord and my God. Because we believe that Christ is present in the scriptures that we read and in the Eucharist that we celebrate. Jesus accepts Thomas's profession of faith, but takes the occasion to bless all those who have not seen and yet believe. And that's why the gospel is selected to be read on the Sunday after Easter. It's addressed to the church, to you, to me, who have not seen but believe. We did not experience the empty tomb, as did John and Peter. We did not encounter Christ in the garden, as did Mary. We did not walk with him on the road to Emmaus, nor did he appear in our midst in the upper room. Nevertheless, we believe. The key is not to abandon those who doubt, or if we are the doubter, not to abandon the quest to grow, to seek, and to refine, perhaps, the God who seeks us. At times, the doubt is emotional or physical. We can't believe a good God would allow such pain and suffering to exist for a certain person or group of persons. My point here is not to address the ancient mystery of the problem of evil, It's simply to identify it as a potential source of our moments of doubt and as occasions for making an act of faith. May this Eucharist on the second Sunday of Easter be a time to thank God for the gift of faith and to ask the Lord's blessing on those in our families who may be struggling with the presence of doubt. May Thomas the Apostle intercede for us and for our brothers and sisters so that they may may go beyond doubt and embrace the gift that is our faith.